Uh, so the, um, as you can tell, we're a very serious crowd. We have, uh, uh, I think I'll bring up Michael uh, to speak now, and then uh, after that we'll have uh, uh, Melody and her son can speak about the community center. Where do you want to, do you want to sit here and do it, or do you want to uh, stand up here and face everyone? Face it, I'll, I'll be your hands now. All right, that sounds good to me. <laughs> Let's wait and see if I know how to do it. Guys, uh, over here, okay? Yeah, that's right. Great. Yeah, that's cool. All right, hi everyone. I'm Michael Thor Bjornsson. I'm 18 years old. I go to the Wolsey High School here in I'm here to tell you about my experience these past two summers with golf. Uh, starting with the U.S. Junior Amateur Championship. Uh, so this tournament was played in Baltus Rall, New Jersey. And it has a really strong history when it comes to uh, good junior golfers who have eventually turned pro and played on the PGA Tour, such as Tiger Woods and Jordan Spieth. So um, here's a small little highlight video of my championship match against at the, who at the time was the number one ranked junior golfer in the country or in the world actually. So, I'll be just play the video. Today it's the championship match of the U.S. Junior Amateur for Baltus Roll Golf Club. This was the summer of 2018, 
and so that this summer with the summer prior and so it felt at the time was one of the, was the biggest junior event that you can win uh, worldwide and I just felt it was such an honor to share the same trophy and look at it and see Tiger Woods and Jordan Spieth on that wow. and um, just knowing that I could play at uh, the top level in junior golf and being the number one ranked junior golfer in, in the country uh, it was really a special special moment and just a special week overall and so by winning that tournament I qualified automatically for the 2019 US Open wow. at Pebble Beach which I played in this past June and if we go to the top left tab That's okay. Okay. yes so this right here is the player profile and so fortunately um, I was able to play on the weekend and make the cut uh, being the second youngest to make the cut at the US Open since I think it was 1940 or so. Oh my gosh. So, um, I can't really see what I... These are just some of the highlights okay. from, if you guys want to see more videos. Yeah. Can I click? Can I click? Um, um, if we go to... Yeah. Uh-uh. Yeah, we'll uh -uh. yeah, if we go to the next one. Not my best day in golf, but I 
again, you can't really be too disappointed playing uh, with some of the best players on one of the best courses in the world. Um,
trying to get into a certain position in my backswing or have a certain feeling when I make contact. And it's just, it varies from week to week. So it's not really one thing that I can just throw out there and um, just fix whatever. Okay, well, it's nice to know that you have swing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, uh, how caddied for you at the U.S. Open? So the year prior, I played the U.S. Amateur at the same course. And the person that we found, he was a local guy. He played some tournaments at Pebble Beach. He caddied for me at the U.S. Am. And then I asked him again if he could caddy for me at the U.S. Open. Was that, how'd that work out? Good? Yeah, yes. He definitely knew what he was talking about. He was an experienced golfer himself. And it was really good to have another person to help on inside and everything when it comes to that. Uh, your friend that's uh, was ranked number one there, is he from this area also? Or? He's from Australia, oh, sure. and then he goes to uh, school in Florida. He actually, I this is my first year up in Wolsey High School. I'm a senior, though. Uh -huh. I went to uh, <coughs> my first three years of high school at a boarding school. It's a sports academy in uh, just south of Tampa, so I would practice with them a few times. Oh, so that's um, where you met down there? Uh, we, we've met when we were 10, but it was pretty cool to be only an hour away and we could just practice on the weekends together. Let's go back to when you were six. I, I <laughs> <laughs> were you just good from the beginning and so that's why you continued or did you really have to work at getting this good? I mean, I, I have a feeling you were just good. I ha <laughs> I'm not that you didn't have to work. Yes. I mean, uh, um, so when I was six, obviously, I mean, I'm not hitting it no. anywhere past <laughs> 100 yards or 150 yards per se. So. I oh, I had some ta talent compared to the kids around, like in town, but nothing really so great compared to the other six-year-olds around the country. But I obviously I worked hard. I've worked hard ever since I started playing, and uh, I've put in most of my time comes into the summer. That's where it's basically 100% golf, and just because. That's where uh, when all the tournaments are. I see you wear a Taylor hat. Does that mean that they're you're on the payroll there? No, I'm not on the payroll, but they um, they they've been really nice to me. They help me with um, equipment and yeah, clubs just expensive. so I can use and golf balls and stuff like that because you know, they're just really nice company and they've been helping me for the past three four years now. What do you do to stay in shape when you can't play golf? So, uh, during the off season, I'm mostly doing just work in the gym. Uh, I go with my friends. They <coughs> play ice hockey during the winter. So when they need to go to the gym, I go to the gym with them. And that's basically how I sort that out during the winter. So, Michael, big question is, um, do you see yourself turning pro after college? Yes, I do. <laughs> I, hopefully, um, I mean, college is supposed to make everyone a lot better, and I could have asked for a better program to join. <laughs> they, I mean, Tiger Woods went there, Tom Watson also went there, and it's just, um, I hope I get to the level of where I'm good, good enough so I can have the opportunity to turn pro. Good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. So we had some videos of, um, he turned 18 in September, so we had videos and he didn't know he hasn't seen it, but um, we were going to have a, a birthday party for him and I was going to show him uh, Ernie Els and some of the pros saying happy birthday to him. some cards here. I'm going to leave three on each table if anybody is interested.
it's not as big. This is great, but this is a little presentation. My son is going to do uh, it. I think Rotary has been, Bob has been a big part of it. And we are all working on that. We went this summer to, uh, it's about a Siddhi community in India. Um, we went summer to uh, India there to do some work, field work. So I think we can just, Ron is going to talk a little bit and then I can ask them, answer any questions you might have. Um, Donna, you are part of it, the raising money. And Margaret is a big, big, big chunk of money has been raised by Margaret. So we are little uh, people who are doing some field work.
and so it's some pictures. Yeah. It's a video. Yeah. How do I put them? Sorry. It's not a video. It's a picture. So this is the jungle we, we drove through, and this bridge. The car almost like I think the car got hit, right? The car. In the bottom of the car. Yeah, yeah. We had to get stop and we had to push stop and get out. And, yeah. With my little one, my seven-year-old was there yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the overflowing river. We came in the middle of the monsoon season, and there's the damaged forest. These are trees that fell. And this woman we met, her house has no electricity or running water, and there's only one light bulb in the house, and even that, that she didn't have electricity for weeks, because of the floods. And so, the, the guy we're working with in India, his name is Ramnath Siddhi, and he's a Siddhi man, but he's one of, he's the most educated Siddhi in the community, and so he went to college, and he's trying to, what he's trying to do is he's a social worker, and he's trying to help the Siddhis, um, he's working with us to help the Siddhis. So, we discussed plans to visit Yalapur and potential sites for the community center. And so this is us, the community, and this is me, my brother, and my mom. And um, the, on the left side, you can see it's outside of school. And up there, we're in the school meeting kids. And then down here, we're meeting a city family. So this is my mom. I interviewed, um, well, let's, let's skip that video. I know the local language, so I interviewed in our local language. There are two main languages spoken by Siddhi. I could communicate, speak both languages, so I've had an interview. I did an interview with her. Yeah. Um, okay, this, okay. this is cool. And so this is us talking to high school students about mental health and education. So there are a majority number of uh, CD uh, kids go to this high school. Uh, tenth grade is uh, the, where they decide, depending on their scores, they decide whether they're going to do engineering or commerce or something. But when they don't score very well, that's where the highest number of suicide in that to kids. They're roughly 16 years old. So I did talk about mental health in that part of our project. And how did they respond? What was their response? It's, I have a whole video of that. It was very successful, oh, yes. Nice. And Bob is not here, unfortunately. Bob Anthony, one of our, you know, you all know him. Yep. He runs this uh, depression uh, program yep. in India. Uh, part of that is, you know, social worker and uh, counselors are there. Yep. That was very successful. Bob started and it's been adopted by many schools in India. Um, and we are we are kind of a continuing that project. Hopefully, uh, I can fill big you know role Bob has left uh, and told me to uh, take over. Go back. Go back. Okay, sorry. All right. So what we're doing is we're trying to build a community center for them. And so with the building of this community center, um, cities will not will be able to establish a network, and they they can not only learn about the benefits that they have. So the government has recently granted them scheduled, like, um, scheduled travel status, meaning they have access to like basic healthcare and education. But the problem is that a lot of them don't actually know about these benefits. And a lot of them are isolated, so they live in the forest. And so most of these benefits don't even get to them in the first place. So with this community center, they can, they can learn about these benefits and they can gain um, further knowledge and communication via the internet. And so they would have access to the basic necessities that a lot of us in Western society we take for granted. And um, we're not, I don't want you guys to think that we're just giving them money, you know? We're tr what we're doing is we're trying to give them a community where they can enable themselves to come up in society, you know? And so we're focusing on the children. So they are the future, and we're trying to focus on education for the city children. And so these are some potential spots for the community center, and we just visited them. Do you want to click on the site? Yeah. Click on the. Well. And so this is the site that yes. uh, Mrs. Fuda's son made. Oh, nope. internet is it quite on. Oh, there's no internet. Here we go back. It's on the bottom. Yeah, this one? Yeah, that's one. Okay, so this is the site, and um, as you can see, Marguerite's, or Mrs. Fuda's name is right there. So, so um, how would you choose, you know, so you have three sites that are identified, so then how, how do you, what's the next step and how do you 
you will get to, to decide which one. So I can answer that. Can I stand up for So one is next to the bus station so that a lot of people don't have their own uh, way of traveling transport. So we are, we are hoping that if we have it near the bus station so they can catch a local bus. Because they are kind of a segregated. Yeah. They're not in the city. Yeah. They're further away in the forest or further far away. So they can come to the bus station. Right behind the bus station is our top priority. Unfortunately, that costs a lot of money. Even the site may be more than $50,000, but we, we just looking at it. Second site was next to that high school where we went to. That is, that Bob Anthony thought that was a really good site because the kids can come over in the afternoon like a center for them. Yeah. So that's our, uh, you know, our number one priority. That much smaller spot, but you know, we want a little building there that would be used and then you can expand probably. And the third one was really nice place. I fell in love with that spot. But again, that's very expensive. I think we need a big donor to kind of help with that. Um, so there's any other questions? Yeah, you know, so you mentioned next to the school, but could you actually use the school itself um, so that, you know, maybe after school hours, you can have a room that's dedicated to be the, the center? Well, there is the place near the school right now. It's like little uh, one sixth of this place, little shed. Literally, mm. you pull the shed up, and there's uh, two computers. Um, Bob and uh, Nancy has donated a lot of uh, uh, books and stuff, and people, kids come and use it. And that's a tiny, tiny place. But school after school, I I think it's very. There's nothing called after school it exists oh. back home. Mm -hmm. the, I know. I grew up in literally that kind of school. I, I know what it is, so I don't, it's a government property and yeah. I don't think so they would. One day, yes, they might, but not as not a regular yet. thing. And that would be ideal place if we could find that spot. Um, and it's really um, bad. Um, but tell, I think to answer the question, maybe you should tell her, this This needs to fund itself. Yeah. yeah. So, for example, if we have a community center, like the Italo Center, right here in Wellesley, yeah. we're using it for our events. Yeah. And that could generate income to pay for the rent, to pay for, yeah. except we, we can't use a school no. for social activities at that level. Oh, like no. It's across the street you from You can spread. use once in a while, not regularly. No. School mm -hmm. will allow, district will allow, mm -hmm. people have done things there, but they can't have this regular program whether they need to cook or something, have a, you know, food kind of a thing, that will be, you know, difficult. And we talked about, you know, unfortunately, unfortunately, I come from a, there's caste system, I come from a top caste, and I saw how, and I'm a physician, it doesn't matter to me, everybody has a red color blood, but I, I saw those things going through people having difficulties, you know, people how they treat it differently. My moms, my parents, and my grandparents, but I don't have that, thank you, my kids don't have to go through that, but they saw what it is like. And I think it's very important because what if you compare my communities have, like they are 30 years ahead compared to these communities. I think it's a basic thing for everybody. They need to have a place where they can have um, something they can work on their community and help each other, really yeah. speaking. You know, but you know, we can make it as a wedding kind of a place. Some programs can be run and that can generate, uh, generate the money on its own to maintain, but to start, we need something. Nobody can, can make that. And so our target is 50,000, and right now we have raised 25,000. 25, so we're looking at that. We have two great um, um, two, two donors $10,000 yeah. to donate it. That's amazing. And two, uh, you know, people are very you know, interested in this project. And we are going to publish some things in the local papers. So one of our writer think about hopefully then I can share it on my hospital website. I work at Newton Wellesley, I'm one of the physician there. And I have raised money for, uh, I ran the Boston Marathon this year for the Cancer Center. I'm hoping that some money might have, somebody might be really interested in giving a big amount of money and hopefully this helps. Uh, we tried uh, recruiting some of the Indian uh, communities, but you know, uh, possibly one day it will all happen, but we need why we need uh, rotaries, um, ro we can't just send money to India and ask somebody to buy a land. We can't do that. I can't do that as an American citizen. But rotary, local rotary is involved, and they will kind of a channel through the system, and we just have to 
race. Well, you talk about how the population that lives, I mean, there's the slide that had one light bulb, I mean, oh, you yeah, don't have so water. I think this guy can tell, water, yeah. So we, we went outside, we went to their house, oh. they have a barrel that they collect water outside, and that's used for drinking water, and then that's pretty much all they have for water. I think it's easy to make a parallel with how slaves survived in this country, and I think that's why our father, so I'm from India, my husband's from Africa. That's why I was asking. You, oh, sorry. <laughs> you looked Cameroonian, sir. You really did. <laughs> you really did. So, um, so if the slaves ran off, for example, in Mississippi, they ran into the bush. They, to escape slavery, you run away. You run as far as you can go. And that's what happened in India. So the slaves have not, they didn't come back down, even though slavery was abolished. And the same thing here, I see this country as such a big divide regarding race and there's trust issues. Yeah. They do not trust the government. And just listening to the news today, the people don't trust government. So anyhow, those are the parallels. I, I like making the parallels so you can yeah. understand yeah. So those things. Right. I think like it answers the question. It's a pretty yeah. basic, basic, basic. Yeah. I, yeah. I can, yeah. you know, yeah. I grew yeah. up yeah. in that kind yeah. of environment. I can tell you days worth of information. Well, the, the, the question I think uh, I'm curious about is, is that you know, when we see other projects in mm -hmm. poor areas, we usually say, well, you got to do something with water. you got to do something with you know, the basic needs. Mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, yeah, I'm sure that's needed. How they can get help. We need to start with probably kids and they, you know, like Rohan, Michael, that kind mm -hmm. of kids bringing up more things for the community. That's what we're it's talking they, they're about. They're too spread over. Yeah. So if you want to so talk about plumbing, if you want to talk about, um, they're farmers. So they, they grow their own crops and their own food. So food is not an issue. Um, their kids look healthy. Did y'all see them in the school? I mean, they look healthy. So it's really hard sometimes to show children that are healthy and it's the issues are not the same as you may think. Does that answer the uh, question a bit? Uh, yeah. How do they cook their meals? What do they cook? Wood. Firewood. Yeah. Firewood. Yeah. A lot of, I, I wouldn't say just the community, a lot of people in India where I come from still use firewood. But I think comparatively, the community hasn't moved on compared to other communities where, you know, there is parts, you know. So, and they're all spread over. A lot of them will still live in the forest, and the government is saying you're doing deforestation, and there's always clash between, you know. Mm -hmm. and that's but, but, but you, I think what you're saying here is that rather than I mean, the, the problem of trying to help, you know, all these families, it's, it's a huge problem where if you have a local area, you can start yes. building up from yeah. there. Yeah. And educate. Yeah. Yeah. Edu education is, education is the main thing, and you yeah. can't always do it in a school. Yeah. First of all, there is... No, you can't do it in a school. You I, can't do it can in a school because we're talking about yeah. a caste system where, for example, there is one computer, and you have the Brahmin has access to the keyboard. The untouchable, trust me, he's standing on the wall and he can't even see the screen. That was the introduction Bob Anthony and Ramnath gave when they came into a classroom. Some of it has changed. I, I have a long interview with that classroom, uh, little kids where they are. Um, I guess it's, it's hard to kind of uh, put it out there and speak about it. It's okay in the school, uh, but when they go, things may be different. You are from I guess that's the, t the thing we don't typically see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, this is really pretty much like a racism caste yeah. system. Is but do you have a, uh, a fund me site? Yeah, it's on the website. Yeah, fund is there, and Donna is managing the treasurer. She's the one who's looking at all the money. And the, this is the account that I said we were going to yeah. try to have yeah. a separate to keep all the money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And. Um, um, uh, uh, I should have bought your magazine, the Linda. Yeah. The website is sydneycommunitycenter.com. So S I D D I communitycenter.com. So that's one of the website. We have a Facebook page. We are we are targeting certain people who might be interested when they hear about it. They want to do more. Even some Indian uh, community.
communities around. So it's just kind of a raising awareness and trying to talk to people. So the $50,000, is that just for the land or is that for building? Well, we have to decide. If that's what it is, we, we have to decide uh, you know, what site we can buy. And again, I'll be very much involved on the field. And I'm hoping that if we have a money, I'm trying to get a engineer for the blueprint, everything is come up free. I know few people, my brother knows few people. So hopefully we are getting that as a free service in India. And maybe some people supply some building material so we kind of save in that way. And local rotary might be, you know, kind of, okay, we have money now, let's pitch up this project or maybe help them or, you know. So that kind of a thing. And one of the rotary, Pennsylvania rotary, wasn't Prabhu, he shares the same last name. He has donated millions of dollars to water resources, to, or thousands of do uh, dollars. And I contacted him too, so we can use some of that donation to this project. So you could probably, if you get a rotary in country that's close by, um, you can clearly do you know, grants, of some, you know, global grant. Yes, so she rotary, I mean for, for your depression, for, the, for water projects, and things like that. Yeah. Uh, building, Rotary won't build. Yeah, I know, I know. That's but right. The, that's uh, what I can do. What about, yeah. what about computers? Uh, I'm a private computers, computers, that's another Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we will talk about, that's right. There will be board members who will be managing. I will indirectly help them to, you know, look at the, build, you know, what, what we can do locally. There is a local Rotary in what? Sirsi Rotary. That's the Rotary. I've been in contact with the Rotary president. Yeah. I know a lot of people, my friends who are my colleagues who are physicians are part of that Rotary. So we know people there, yeah. They run a big eye, free eye hospital. Totally. Cool. Hundreds and thousands of people get operated there free. We have one of the one of the donors that gave us was a Chinese family here in Wellesley, gave me ten thousand dollars. And she said I want a GoFundMe page. So we put up a GoFundMe page and now we have this website. So we have two ways of donating. It's just the percentage I was keeps taking a little percentage and I'm a bit stingy. <laughs> so I, the big checks go directly to Donna <laughs> and the small checks go to the GoFundMe page because there is a percentage taken. If anybody has some nice fundraising ideas. Oh, I do. I have a great one. I mean, Kiwanis has got a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> for everyone, even for this country. Kids are exchanging already videos. That's again, that's Bob. So baby, I have to babysit now. It, I'm very interested. I'm a psychiatrist. I would like to do that. But again, uh, that's another project side by side, running, educating, doing things. But this is something we, you know, we got on board for a long time. So we want to continue that. Sorry, if you have any questions, I'll stop talking. <laughs> yeah, oh, there's a question. So okay. my question is, uh, if I had something small that I wanted to chip in, I go to GoFundMe, I write a check, or Yes, I don't get my personal cards. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I walk over and shake your hand. 